I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. And I tell you what. Today we got some different things to talk about here on Dr. Bill to Computer Curmudgeon. Before I go any further, let me tell you that this is Dr. Bill to Computer Curmudgeon, the netcast that is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill to Computer Curmudgeon. I tell you what, it's just, it's a strange time we live in. Now, as I record this, it's a Saturday. It's Saturday after what they call Black Friday. I don't know why they call it Black Friday. I mean, if you think about black, black, in the sense of naming something like this, typically means doom, despair, and agony on somebody. You know what I mean? And I got to wonder, is does that mean the shopkeepers are going, it's Black Friday? I mean, they're making all these sales. They make more sales according to what they say that, that you know, they make all year. So they should be happy. It should be a happy Friday. <laughs> Maybe it's the people that are in the stores that are getting stomped on. Maybe that's why it's Black Friday. Anyway... Could be Mauve Friday as a shade of purple gray. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, and then you got Tiger Direct. For them, it's Pink Friday because they're contributing a lot of their sales to the uh, Susan G. Coleman for the Cure, which is a, a good thing to do. Don't get me wrong, but Pink Friday? Ugh. Anyway, so you got people celebrating Black Friday and Pink Friday and all shades in between. Anyway, I digress pretty badly. The point is that a lot of people were out shopping Friday, and apparently it was a big day, and there was a lot of stuff happening, and people were buying a lot of electronics. Me? <laughs> I sat right in this very chair and watched a lot of nothing on TV. I point to my big TV right there. Just watched stuff. Lots of stuff, including a really silly movie called Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore. That was a really weird movie. Take my word for it. Anyway, this is not a movie review show, okay? <laughs> okay, Wrath of Khan it wasn't, all right? But anyway, it was it was diverting. That's what they call movie review things, you know, when, when they don't know what to say and they don't want to say something really terribly bad, they could just say it was diverting. You know, so is hitting yourself with a hammer. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm, I keep digressing. You know, I should have a digress meter here, but it would be bouncing around all the time, so maybe that's a bad idea, too. Um, you tuned in to hear about tech stuff, I'll bet. So we'll talk about some tech stuff. Uh, let's go to the blog. The blog, of course, being Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. That is at www. D R B I L L dot C C for computer curmudgeon, like it says on the screen. Anyway, go there for these articles, but I'll cover a few things while we're talking. Like I said, these are strange days we're leaving, living in, leaving in, living in, leading. We left these days, they're now behind us. First item. <laughs> I'm just going to keep moving because things are just going wrong. Novell is no more. Now, I worked with Novell as a network operating system for many years. I never was a Novell guru. See, I came up with, actually, I started out with Vax VMS mini computers and DeckNet. So the operating system of choice for me was DeckNet. A lot of you young whippersnappers out there are going, what are you saying? What's DeckNet? No, that's what I'm supposed to do is the, the old senile voice. Though I am not old or senile, I am as sharp as a tack. Anyway, the point is that uh, some of you don't even know what DECnet is. Had a whole separate protocol. It was actually kind of cool. But I got started with VaxVMS, and then, of course, when PCs came along, DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, came up with Pathworks, which was based on LAN Manager, which was Microsoft's protocol. So I didn't mess a whole lot with Novell back then. But as time went by, as we got into the 90s, I went to work for a company that was using Novell and got to play with it a little bit. And then when I went to... High Point Regional Health System, where I work today, they were a Novell shop and were moving away from Novell and going to 
uh, of course, Microsoft's Active Directory and so forth. But the master directory, master directory, ta-da! Anyway, it's still at High Point Regional Health System to this day is Novell. Well, guess what? Novell is now defunct, pretty much. I mean, it still exists as a company, but it has been purchased by Attachmate. Attachmate, I mean, they make, like, thermal emulators and stuff like that. Not exactly a, you know, well-known huge company, which must say something about Novell. But apparently, Novell was bought by Attachmate and also a consortium. That's a big word that means a whole lot of people with a lot of money coming together. <laughs> uh, and they spent $2.2 billion for Novell, which is $6.10 per share. Not exactly... You know, huge, which again tells you about Novell's market share. Sorry, okay. You know, time has gone by. I keep having these little itchy places, so if the light keeps changing, you'll know that it's my hand shading my face. You don't care, I can tell. Anyway, but it is weird because Microsoft is stealing some of the technology. You know, they are the evil empire. They get to do that. So they're part of that consortium, and so they're stealing some of the technology. Uh, so that's just Microsoft being Microsoft, you know. Next item. Next item is, is this the beginning of Wi-Fi everywhere? Now, I like the term ubiquitous Wi-Fi. <laughs> People kid me about that. What do, you, what do you mean by that, Dr. Bill? Well, just what it says. Ubiquitous. Oh, look it up. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi everywhere. I kind of dumbed it down for the headline. <laughs> Wi-Fi everywhere. See, I like words like ubiquitous. Make you sound very smart. Anyway. Yeah, I know you're saying, okay, well, we know better. Anyway, the whole point of Wi-Fi everywhere, as far as I'm concerned, is that all these cool Wi-Fi devices will be able to tap into the cloud. It's like those silly Microsoft commercials. To the cloud! Sounds like Batman, you know, to the back pole! Well, we're going to the cloud. But to me, it's not going to be really fully cloudy until we get ubiquitous Wi-Fi. And I'll keep calling it that because it's fun. At any rate, DARPA is heading up a project. You know DARPA, right? DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The government always does that. They name something and then they call it the letters of each of the first words. First letters of the words. Whatever I mean. DARPA. And then they get to go around talking in such terminology that people don't know what they're talking about. But see, DARPA helped create the Internet. Not the World Wide Web. That was Tim Berners-Lee. Okay, cool dude. But the internet, the actual connecting thing that connects the whole world together, all arm in arm. Anyway, they helped create that. Yes. And so, where was I headed with? Oh, yes, ubiquitous Wi Fi. Here's the whole point I want cool devices. You know, I reach over for my phone today, and it's actually there. Last netcast, I looked for my phone, and it was gone. But I found it. However, the battery is dead. So, what are you going to do? Anyway, when we get ubiquitous Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi connection doohickey on my Android phone will allow me to connect to stuff. And that will be cool. Plus, I work with an internet-based radio station, which is Word of Faith Radio. And that's going across Shoutcast, which is internet radio. And you'll be able to listen to it much easier when there's ubiquitous Wi-Fi. The cloud is all around us, fluffy and, and you know, maybe it'll be pink. But this cloud will allow us to use our devices to pick up on services like Word of Faith Radio and all the other internet radio stations. There's like 30,000 internet radio stations. Whoa. So you've got a choice of just about anything you want out there. Cool stuff. Anyway, next item. Netflix agrees with the doctor. That's the headline. <laughs> just because I wanted to, you know, do something strange. I like doing those strange things. But here's the reason. The reason is... Netflix is providing a streamed-only account service. You know, they started out with the we'll send you a DVD and the mail and you can send it back whenever you want to kind of thing. Well, that's okay. But streamed is the future! <laughs> so, I do my own sound effects. I'm talented that way. <laughs> but the future is streaming, and streaming is cool. And you've heard me talk about the Roku box. And like I said, one day we'll do a review of that. However, in the meantime, trust me, it's going to be good. So you can use something like a Roku box or a Boxy box or, you know, Apple TV or one of those kind of boxes to stream your movies directly to your home through the interwebs. <laughs> I like that. 
It's just weird. Next item! Oh! Boy, the next item caught me off guard because it ends up being a Geek Software of the Week. The drum roll. Who knew? Anyway, Geek Software of the Week this week is Active Smart. Now, this is one of those not quite free, but kind of free things. And that is that the trial is free. You can download it, you can try it, see how it works. If you like it, you pay a little bit for it. Eh, okay, that's fair. But Active Smart allows you to tweak your hard drive. Protect your hard drive from sudden failure. Boy, that would just not make your day, you know what I mean? So, you can use Active Smart. It uses the smart technology. You know, that's a that's a special technology. S M A R T, kind of like DARPA was, you know. Anyway, one of those. And it uses that technology and gives you screens and just all kinds of cool stuff so you can tweak your hard drive and also see if it's failing. Now, they also have an interesting little tidbit that is I thought was an interesting way to go for a vendor. Uh, if you have a blog like I do and you give them a favorable review, you can submit that and uh, they will give you a free license. Now, I haven't done that. You know, I, I haven't decided whether to do that or not. I mean, I like it. It's a cool product. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, but, you know, I just don't know if I absolutely positively need the license because I can check it and, and see that my drive is cool and, you know. Now, if I wanted to continuously monitor it and get the hard drive temperature and all that kind of stuff, you know, that would be cool too. So, I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see how it goes. You know, hey. Finally, last item is that. Are we entering the age of the tablet computer? Now, I don't have a tablet computer. I have laptops. I have desktops. Don't have a tablet yet. Not that I wouldn't want one. I've played with an iPad, and it is just so cool. <sighs> but I wouldn't mind playing with a tablet and you know, seeing if I could use it as my normal computing device. It would have to have a big enough screen. That's the only thing. i got to have some screen acreage. <laughs> Even my laptop is like a 17-inch laptop. It's a big screen because I do a lot of stuff. So i got to have a big screen. So anyway... Tablet sales, however, are, are kind of accelerating. Now, they're not shooting through the roof, okay, but they're accelerating. Such that they say, let's see if I can find the statistic. There it is. Basically, for every PC desktop sold, there are 2.5, uh, no, let me back up, turn around, turn around. No, that's not right. For every 2.5 tablet sold, there is one less desktop sold. Yes. That was the statistic that they quoted, which to me means that the PC desktop sale is diminishing and tablets are going up, but they didn't seem to say it was all that big of a, not that big of a trend yet. Just read the article. It's very confusing. <laughs> anyway, so that's the tech news. Uh, I do want to say happy Thanksgiving. I trust you are thankful for all the good stuff that you have. All the cool tech toys. We love our tech toys. So, happy Thanksgiving a few days late. Uh, and also, looking forward to a Merry Christmas. I'm looking forward to a Merry Birthday, because my birthday is November 30th. So, on November 30th, remember the doctor finally and go, Today's the doctor's birthday. Whoa, cool. It's on a Tuesday. I never could get the hang of Tuesdays. <laughs> I know, it's, I can never get the hang of Thursdays. I can never get the hang of Thursdays. I can never get the hang of Thursdays. But Tuesday's my birthday. What am I going to do? Let's, you know, change the quote to fit the season. There you go. So, that's just about it for this netcast. Stay tuned for all the cool ones that are coming down the pike. Down the pike. Don't know what that means. So, I'll go look it up on Wikipedia. In the meantime, the doctor is out of here.